Hey there, I'm your host Lesawi, and in today's video, we'll be creating a main menu. So with that said, let's begin. Before we begin, I've got a menu background, which is a PNG. Now you don't really need an image if you don't want to. I'm just using this to give our main menu an extra bit of flair. And I've also got an audio folder, which has two button sound effects, and we've got two mouse sound effects. Let's start by right clicking and creating a new folder. Now I'll call this menu system and we can right click on this and give this a new color. Now I'll set this to green and let's open this up. Inside we want to create another folder which we'll call MUI and this stands for materials user interface. Let's open this up, right click and we'll create a material. Now this material we can call M underscore menu UI. Let's open this up. Now click on your material or select it and on the left hand side where we see material domain we'll change surface to user interface and the blend mode from opaque to translucent. Next what we want is let's right click and grab a radial gradient radial gradient exponential and if we hold down one on our keyboards and press left mouse we'll get a constant vector node. Now for the value I find 0.9 to work well so play around with this if you wish. And we want to plug this into our density and into radius. From here then I want to grab a one minus node so this inverts it. We want two multiply nodes so press M left mouse and left mouse again. We can open these up. This will go into B. This will go into A. Then this can go into A again and we'll do one minus again. Plug this into your opacity and into your final color. And we'll get something looking like that and let's apply and save this next inside of our menu system let's right click and create a user widget and we'll call this wb underscore menu button and let's open this up inside we want to grab a button for ourselves so let's drag that in here and for the style we'll go in here change normal padding to be zero Press padding to be zero as well. And for the background color, we can change this to black and press OK. Button, we can also name this button underscore menu. That works. And on top of this, we want to grab a text. So let's grab a text, put this in here, change this to be variable. And for the name, we'll do txt underscore button name. Let's actually click on this button as well and change the menu name to menu UI. Back on our text, what we want is we'll set this to be zero, H2, V2, so horizontal on two, vertical on two. For the name, we'll just call it a menu button. And for the size, we'll do 48, so on the font. And that's looking nice. So let's compile and save this. And let's go into our event graph. Inside here, let's get rid of event construct and event tick. And let's grab our txt underscore button name. And again, if this is not available to you, just make sure you click this to be variable. And back inside, we'll do a set text in here, like so. We'll promote this pin to a variable and let's call it our button name. We want to make this instance editable and this option will allow us to set the name in the editor. Next, we'll grab this again and do set font. Connect the execution pin and from the blue pin, we'll make slate font info. And in here, we want to promote a few things to variables. We want to know the font family, so promote that to a variable. We'll call it font family. We'll then promote our typeface to a variable called typeface. And next, we'll grab the font size. Promote this to font size. You can then click on this, hide everything that's not necessary, select everything, press Q to align it. And there we go. Now, if we compile everything, we can set values in here to be default. If you click on this and you don't see the font, 
click on the gear icon and do show engine content. We can search for Roboto. Roboto, there we go. And typeface will do bold. And the font size by default will do 48. And just like that, let's compile and save this. Next, we want to go ahead and click on our button and do on hovered. We want to get on unhovered and once again on clicked. And we'll deal with this in a second. So whenever we hover over the button, we want to grab it. And we want to do set background color. Like so. And the background color, we can change to anything we like. I have one saved in here, so I'll be using that. Feel free to copy paste this value if you wish to do so. And we'll hit OK. Then we want to do a play sound to D. And in here we can select our button sound. So button one, uh, button, and I like that. So we'll leave this there. Then on unhovered, we want to get this and we'll change this back to the original, which we set to be black. So we'll drag this to be black and hit OK. On clicked, what we want to do is in here, we want to play a sound. So we'll do play sound to D and we'll use our button again. So button this time too. And at the very end, I want to create a event dispatcher, which we can call on button clicked. And we just want to call it at the very end, like so. And let's compile and save. Next, we'll go ahead and create another widget. And this time we'll call this our WB underscore main menu UI. Hit enter and let's open this up. Inside, I want to grab a canvas panel like so. And on top of this, we'll grab a border. In here, we can do border underscore color. And if you hold Control Shift, click on Anchors and select Full Screen, it'll be full screen. Now with this here itself, we can go on the brush and we can give it a background. So we can use the menu background we had like this. And that's looking nice. On top of this, we'll grab another border. In here, what we want to do is, we'll call this border underscore background. And for the image, we'll use our menu UI we made material. And for the brush color, we'll set this to be black. And we get this type of effect. Then on top of this, we want to grab an overlay, like so. And this will allow us to put multiple things inside. For padding, let's do zero. And let's just double check our borders also have zero padding. So we have a full screen. OK. So on this overlay, I want to add a blur or extra flare and background blur, fill this out and background blur strength will do one. Then I want a size box like so, drag this into your overlay and inside this size box, what we'll do is we'll overwrite the width and the height and we want to center align this on the screen. So for the width, what we'll do is we'll set this to 420 and our height we actually won't use. So pick this to be false. It will scale with how many buttons we put inside. And for the name, we can just call it box underscore outline. Next, we'll grab a vertical box like so. Put this inside. With this vertical box, we'll call it box underscore buttons. And inside, we can grab our menu UI button we made, menu button, drag it in and drag as many as you wish. I'll control C and paste it four times. So we'll have four buttons. I'll select all of them, adding I'll do 10. And there we go. Now we can click on each individual button and call it something. So I'll call it button underscore play. And then for the button name, we can do play. And as you can see, our other parameters are unavailable. That's because I forgot to click them to be instance editable. So let's go to the graph and click on these guys here. So we have 
about the name that's instance editable the font isn't so let's make it typeface as well and font size let's compile and save head back in here compile and save this and now we have those options for our second button what we'll do is we'll call this our settings and the button we'll call button underscore settings and we'll do button underscore credits button credits in here and lastly we'll do button underscore quit and we have our quit button next let's go ahead and grab a text like so and drag this into your overlay and we'll use this for our title so let's center it on the screen at the top and um, padding from the top i want 25 for the size we'll do 124 we'll also rename it to txt underscore menu title we won't make it variable it's not necessary and for the text itself we'll just call it main menu and we're finished in here so let's compile everything and save next we'll go over to the event graph and inside here we want to click on button play and do unbutton click and this is our event dispatcher so in here what we'll do is we'll get player controller like so and we'll do show mouse cursor Oop, not get set show mouse cursor to be false and we'll do set input game only and at the very end what we'll do is we'll um, open up our level by either name or object reference i prefer object reference and in here we just search for our third person map or whatever your world is called and we'll compile that next we want to grab our button quit on button clicked and in here we'll simply do a quit game like so and just like that let's compile and save next let's go ahead and create a main menu level so for that i'll use the third person folder we'll go into maps and in here i'll right click create a level and we'll call it l underscore main menu and let's open this up save selected inside here we want to click on this little icon here and go to open level blueprint inside here what we'll do is we'll get rid of event tick and we'll do get player controller and we'll do set show mouse cursor to be true because we want it visible in the main menu and we'll do a create a widget and the widget we're creating is our main menu widget and we'll simply do add to viewport and we'll compile and save that now whenever you open up your world in this level we'll start our main menu so let's hit play and there we go if we quit we quit and if we hit play we're in our level nice also if you want to start the game whenever you go into standalone with this menu so in here what we can do is we can go to settings project settings and in maps and modes when this world opens we have our editor startup which is the third person and the game startup we can change this to be our main menu level so we start the game here and let's save that so this is it for today's video in the next episode we'll be creating a pause menu so with that said i hope you enjoyed and if you did leave a like and as always happy developing